made it. Sam, keep coming. <laughs> Hey Spicer! Hey, Sam, what's going on? Not much, it was a good drive down here. Well, we'll give you the tour. Yeah, wonderful. So, what do we got? We went ahead and added one of our five inch CD five dashes. Oh, so you display awesome. all the information. You'll have you know high voltage, all the inverter information, fault codes, everything will come up on that dash right there. It'll let you know what's going on when when it's going on. There's range estimates, battery capacity, um, and we even have a charging screen. So when you plug the charger in, it'll switch automatically, pop up, pop up, go to the charging screen, and let you know what the current state of charge is. And there's a little battery to show it charge. So much more advanced than it used to be. Yeah. A little ode to our, our our roots here. We have our X series wideband in there. <laughs> <laughs> showing battery voltage. AFR on electric vehicle. Yep. All yep. right. We also added one of our keypads. Oh, wow. So Kirk drove this thing back. You guys originally had like the ignition switch and, and something else on the other, yeah, on the other knob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now this is just a wake switch. You turn this on first, everything wakes up. And then you have your PNRD and then your high voltage on right there. And this is just headlights. This is this switches between modes. You can have different performance modes. So space for ejector seat and missiles. Yeah, ejector seat, missiles, whatever you want to do with it. Now let's get on to the business end of things. Right there, front and center, our VC200. Oh, wow. That's controlling everything from the charger, the inverter, the motor, um, contactors. So with the, with the VCU, you added some safety. So it's, it's the adult in the room. It's monitoring all the current, it's monitoring the voltages, it's doing all the communication back and forth with the inverter for the, the contact to control. We added a dual channel throttle position sensor. Prior it was just a single channel. Yeah. So it adds a little level of safety in the, in the event of like a circuit failure on one of the channels that it'll just go into an error mode rather than if it faults high, it gets fun. Fun ride. <laughs> the charging is controlled by the VCU. There's a little connector here that's wired to one of the, the charged onboard chargers currently. And then the goal is to have a switch inside the, the charging cover. So that would be a switch there for your 220 or your or your 110 charging. So if you have you know, okay. big charging and you want to use two chargers, flip that switch up, fairly fast charge in there. And if you're dealing with just a regular 110 outlet, flip it down, run one, one charger, keep the supply circuit happy. And not oh, perfect, wonderful, not wonderful. Up. We added a brake pressure sensor that's teed into the, the master cylinder. Mm -hmm that we're using as a brake switch. So out above a certain pressure threshold, the VC is using it as a brake switch. The other beauty of that is we're using that pressure range as the regen input. So the more the more brake pedal more you brake get, I press, give it, the, the more, more regen, regen I get. get. We got so much into it that we had the back end hop at one point, so we had to turn it down <laughs> a little bit. Let's check out the BMS. All right, so here we can see the VCU. We, in, we mounted the units on the back of the packs. Currently, we we're watching this single string of this battery module, and then we're watching a single battery module on that side as well. So we have a, the master unit, there's a satellite unit, and they're both communicating to each other through this wire, which is a serial, it's a serial connection, and you can actually daisy chain multiple units. But right now, we're only using just two, two units, and the VC200 can support up to six. Just and how many cells does it uh, support? Each, each unit has 18 cell taps. This should be good for a typical 400 volt system. Yeah, no, the uh, the setup we were using, we had a maximum of 12 cell taps per, per monitoring unit. So additional six cells per unit, wonderful. The BMS works in hand with the VCU. It reports the open cell voltages, the internal res resistance of the cells, the regular cell voltages. It does all the balancing through the VCU. So the VCU is still actually controlling all the balancing. You set a minimum voltage for balancing, maximum voltage for balancing. Basically, it breaks each cell group up into three groups and it looks for the highest highest voltage within each three groups and then just balances that and brings it down. So, All right. And then it looks at the entire pack and just tries to bring everything down. And that happens while driving, happens while charging. So goes. I can get a high voltage circuit warning, a low voltage circuit warning, or a or out of balance, balance warning. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. What about uh, uh, the module temperatures? Is there a temperature monitoring yes. of them? So each each BMS unit has three um, thermistor inputs. So with these modules, there's, there's actually two built-in thermistors right. in each one. So yes. we're actually monitoring pack temps. So it's looking at min, max module temps, and then the overall pack, just like an average overall pack temp. So you would have the potential that Perhaps you were in a cold cold weather environment, you could set a threshold that would turn on a heating pump or something to keep the batteries warm. Yeah, yeah. Nice. And we could also nice do feature. a torque limiting versus pack temp too. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, the other thing the BMS does is also, it's 
it's interfacing with the J1772 connector. Okay. And so that's, that does all the relaying of the information to the VCU to handle the charging too. So when you plug in, the J1772 sends a signal to the BMS. The BMS actually wakes up the VCU to do all of the, the management of the charging. So it'll turn off if I have a high cell voltage at some point. It'll yeah. turn off in safety. Yeah. Or if so, it has a low yeah. cell where exactly. some Correct. problem, it'll prevent me from charging and damaging yeah. my, my, mod, yeah. my modules. It's all automated. Once it all hits a full charge, it just shuts itself down and that's it. Next morning, you unplug and you unplug just go and drive to work. You guys made a lot of improvements on our little bus. But some of the features we added, um, hill hold. Um, I don't know, one of the things that Kirk talked about when we first, when he first got his first driving impression was was like pedal bounce. I've got currently four different performance modes in there. Most of it is just is throttle response. Level one is like the, the softest level, and then performance level four is like super responsive. We've done a lot of done a lot of filtering with the torque control and the pedal control. So especially with this bus, with you know the, the, the suspension the back there, it's a little stiff. It, it's, a little it's hard to maintain a good throttle input, so it it dampens that out pretty well. You won't feel that surge and jump and bounce all over. But it's, it's a very smooth ride. One of the things that you know, you see the guys at the at the fuel station where they leave, you know, their their the fuel nozzle leaving the, the nozzle and just drive in, yeah. Away. Yeah, when J1772 is plugged in, it disables any torque as well. It won't let you drive away plugged so into I get, the wall. I get to sit in the driver's seat for five minutes, step on the gas pedal, yeah. going, why won't my yeah. bus go? That's let's, handy. That's going to save yeah. some body work. Yeah. <laughs> let's take a look at the dash. Let's All right. Get a good idea of what information it gives you. So first page is, I feel, is more like the, the important information you need to know right, right off the bat. We're doing range calculation, current draw out and in. You have a battery state of charge, battery voltage, the inverter DC bus voltage, and inverter temp, motor temp, and performance level. And as you switch through, you can see the different changes in uh, performance level. And when you turn the high voltage on, that light turns green to let you know that that contactor is closed, high voltage is on. This top bar here will report any errors from the from the inverter if there's any errors. That information is also available on page two. So we have just some general information about input, output, torque command, and things like that. That's information that's going back and forth between the VCU and the, and the inverter. This gives you an idea of when the brake switch is active so ah. you can see when that happens. So then this is reporting of the, the contactor from the inverter. And as you hit the off button, it does a discharge command and lets you know when discharge is complete and everything's powered down. Same information, you got your DC bus, DC amperage, the discharge current limit, charge current limit. Those are actually set within the VCU. Uh, motor temp and inverter temps are right there. This is more kind of pack and charging information. It gives you your cell min max, your, your cell min max temperatures. So this is your individual BMS information. So these are individual cell voltage right there. So you can get a, take a quick look at how the balance is yeah. right now. And so yeah, and when you have the charger in, you'll see a battery screen and it'll let you know the current status. It'll say, it'll let you know that the charger connector is connected. Mm -hmm. Um, if charging is active and when it says charge complete, it'll, it'll let you know when the charge is complete as well. And it also does range per hour of, of charge time. So, oh, really? So it'll let you like, so if you're charging at like 20 amps, it'll say, okay, you get like 25 miles per hour of charging. <laughs> so you have, you have an idea of like, oh, I got to go 50 miles here. I got to charge this in two hours and then I'm good. There you go. And you can see we have our keypad in here, which is going to control all of your inputs to select between drive, park, neutral, reverse. Oh, like um, LED rings, they're called nice colors. Yeah. And they actually light up to let you know which which one you're in. Uh, you have to make sure that you're also on the brake prior to switching gears. Otherwise, as a safety, it won't let you. This nice. is your ignition. And then this is your performance level. Switch to toggle between one, two, three, and four. Love it. Great. Right. So way cleaner and more functional than it used to be. Awesome. Well, I'm sure you probably have a lot more experience with this vehicle than I do. You probably spent a lot more hours with it. Or it's our shop ring, it. so I'll get around, yeah. I'd like to have you go for a ride and uh, give me some feedback. Be, be brutal. I'd like to know. All right. <laughs> That's it. Awesome. Yeah, quiet, smooth. Definitely not as jumpy and bumpy as it used to be. Nice. Brakes. Regenning, all right. That is too cool. You like having the data? I do. I mean, actually, honestly, the, the first page is really everything that everything you need. I'm going to use on a daily basis. The rest of the stuff is is all the diagnostic, right? Which is great. You know, it saves me busting the meter out and having to fix anything. Yeah, exactly. And that was the idea behind it was to give yeah. you all the main stuff on one page. Would give you everything you need if. Uh, what are our shift lights indicating? Do we know? Uh, battery state of charge. Ah. So when it's a hundred percent, those it's all will, blue, all the way to blue. They'll all be lit up. Now this will also log all the data for me too, as well. Correct. Massively improved, and the diagnostics are off the wall. This is just absolutely wonderful. The information that's right here that I don't have to open the box up. 
I don't have to get a multimeter out. Yeah, you know, everything I could want to know. I really, really like it. Can't believe you guys were so nice to this bus. We were going to beat a snot up. We slammed the doors and freaking kicked things. Like you're jumping around, and monkeying and twisting and bending crap. <laughs> I'm scared this piece was going to break off at some point. Oh yeah, so are we. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Spicer. Thank you for loaning us this vehicle for this project. Curious to see what you guys do with all the, EV, the AM EV bits that we put in there and see what you guys can do with it and develop, take this thing to the next level. Oh, great. Thanks, Sam. It, uh, we've got some great products. You improved our little hot rod and uh, more research, research development. Awesome. Make it a fun car. Awesome. If you guys like what you saw here, check out the AM EV website. Check out EV West's website. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. Peace out. Till next time. That's, that's another level of safety. So I can't power brake the bus, in other words. So I can't throttle and brake at the same time. With some settings, you can. <laughs> you, you can figure it to do it. You can do it.